You are listening to the Green Living Chats podcast brought to you by Echo Amit Solutions in Ghana. I'm your host, David. Hello there, it's great to come your way again this week on this episode to still discuss ways where we can make a change in our environment. Last week's episode was with My name is Sudi and I'm the co-organizer for the Secular Economy Club in Malaysia uh, with the Putali Jaya chapter. Thank you very much for your time today. We would like to just share with you what is Secular Economy and how you can apply Secular Economy to tackle food waste, especially in your retail outlet. Sudi gave us an in-depth description of what circular economy is and the major strategies we can use in reducing food waste that goes into the landfill and why it is important for us to reduce and actually practice circular economy in food and beverage industry. And it didn't just cover the people in the industry but also individuals and what we can also do in our communities. This episode is readily available on all podcast platforms and I recommend you check this episode out before we dig into today's episode. In today's episode, we continue with the strategies of optimization and recycling of food waste. We also dig into the different ways where we can apply composting and recovery in food waste. Sudi shares with us practical strategies that we can implement in the industry and in our households on how to reduce food waste. We will also like to get very interactive with how these strategies are also impacting our daily lives. So why don't you send us a picture of how you have implemented these strategies via our social media platforms and also via email. And we would love to share your experience with others. Now let's get into today's episode as Sudi continues with optimization strategies for food waste prevention. Third part of the optimization is talking about reuse and repurpose. So these people at home can also try it. Uh, it's also applicable to you. So the first part we talk about donating and reselling are basically working on those overstock food supplies and food that is still good to eat. Here in reuse and repurpose, we basically look into how to reuse your surplus, your discard, your edible food, and turn it into a dish or repurpose it into a new dish. So you can incorporate your food trimmings, your leftovers, um, into a food stock, for example, vegetable roots and cuttings, apart from the bones, prawn shell, are good as, as is a very good soup stock. Um, I think Bria best uh, that's how Bria best comes from, sorry. And then you can also maximize your meat bone by boiling and harvesting it and, and make a pool pork out of it or pool pool meat out of it. I'm not very good in cooking stuff. Um, I think for skins, you know, you can use them as a flying bass. Um, for trimmings, you can, um, I'm not sure about in your country, but a fish head is quite a popular dish here. So you can actually offer a grill or barbecue fish head. Um, if, you know, vegetables uh, cannot be um, good to make into a decent portion, then maybe you can mix all them up and, and turn it into a vegetable soup instead. I'm not sure. Um, turn a prime, pass the prime fruit into fruit puree, uh, fruit sorbet, for carrot and banana, turn it into bread, for example. So, so plenty of different things that you can do. Um, one tip you can do is also you can freeze all your trimming until you, can, you have enough to make a dish. Then fix a day in a week or a month where you can serve this as a special of the day, for example. Who knows, you know, your chef might create some, some new creation that eventually become a staple, like um, Chinese fried rice. I know Chinese fried rice are basically 
um, a D where it was created out of um, everything that you can find from your fridge. <laughs> I'm, I'm Chinese, so I should know that. Anyway, so let's go back to here, optimization. And the last part of optimization is uh, to send it to the animals. After you have reused your bones as soup store, what can you do with it? You can consider donating it to your local animal shelter. And if time and resources is constrained to you, you can freeze it and accumulate it enough uh, until you have enough, then you send it out once in a while. Or ideally, obviously, if that if you can link it up with them and arrange to uh, arrange them to come and collect it from you, that's really perfect. Um, the other option, if you operate in a really large central kitchen where you have consistently large volume of food waste, is that you can also consider uh, selling it to an animal feed producer and try to recover some cash from there. First, I've already um, shared with you how we can prevent, and secondly, we talk about how we can optimize it. Now, we're going to look into the third part, which is recycling. Um, for items of waste that you cannot prevent or you cannot optimize, there's a golden rule of that. If anything can be eaten or grown in a field or a garden, it can be composted. So recycling is all about diverting it away from landfill. And that is what we want to do today. Um, and do you know that waste is actually a very valuable natural resource for farmers and gardeners? Because basically we can compost those food and decay it to turn it into a highly fertilized, uh, nutrient compost. Compost itself, it has a lot of benefit for the land, including soil conditioner and natural fertilizer and much more. So what you can do is that you can actually send your food waste to your neighborhood community garden or your neighborhood composting uh, center. Um, and you can actually uh, at least then divert those uh, food waste, recover those food waste or recycle those food waste. Um, for, I'm not sure this is also available in your country, but for some country, they also accept coffee ground. Uh, they also accept cooking oil and turn cooking oil into something else. Uh, cooking oil, you can actually turn it into various products like candles, soap, additive for the animal feed or even biodiesel. So there are a few companies um, um, that actually do collect uh, cooking oil, uh, use cooking oil, so it's very good if you can actually connect to them and try to sell to them as well. Um, so coffee ground is also something that can be repurposed or recycled into something else. So you can actually hopefully find some companies around your country who actually do collect coffee ground uh, yeah coffee ground and try to connect with them if you do not have to if you do have the time uh, don't have the time sorry to send those food waste to the community garden yet you also but you have the space so for example you have a central kitchen or yard area or back area and you also generate quite a good volume of food waste daily you can also consider having your own composting machine at your site. There are plenty of different different kind of uh, composting bin or machine you, you can buy online right now. So uh, basically, a composting bin is a container where uh, you can place your organic waste and turn it into compost over time. Some bins are continuous, meaning you need to keep on you can keep on adding them, uh, while some are batches of compost that you have to mix a set of ingredients to it to turn it into compost. However, with a bin, you can always speed up the decomposition. Uh, it's less odor problem and less pest problem as well. So composting, you can do it at your own backyard. It can be an open compost, uh, aerobic or anaerobic composting, but it can be also something that you can easily do by learning online how you can compost and generate uh, some compost and turn them into cash or um, fertilizer for your own garden. Now, this 
third option of recycling your food is using insect. Um, it is not commonly available throughout the uh, entire world, this process yet. Uh, it's called bioprocessing or bioconversion. Um, but it is gaining quite a big momentum right now as an alternative food waste treatment. And it is. So basically, it's using insects to or any uh, insects to break down our food for us one of it is called a black soldier fly it's uh it's larvae can consume organic waste in large quantity than any other known species in its kind and after they turn into fly their cars which is also known as a frass can be used as a fertilizer too so some companies actually um, feed those larvae with uh, food waste and then they dry the larvae and turn it into a food and pharmaceutical ingredients. For example, lipids, protein powder for those build bodybuilders and snacks and even protein bar. Because uh, this, those larvae actually has very high uh, protein content actually. So it's really, really cool because now you're actually um, using your food waste to feed and, uh, some, some insects. And those insects in return are giving us this really amazing benefit. The other one, uh, which is also very common, is called uh, vermicomposting, which is basically feed your leafy vegetable waste to worms. Um, the worms then break down this leafy food waste and their excrement or their poo are full of nutrients. And that's uh, very uh, popular with the organic farming community here. So the most common worms that we use here is actually called uh, African Nightcrawlers due to its size and it is faster and more efficient in breaking down vegetable waste. Some of the hotels here also, they set up their own worm farm in the hotel garden to process their own kitchen leafy waste. In China, they also use cockroaches. Um, there was a very large scale where they work with municipal council to manage that. And an entire building is just full of cockroaches eating all those food waste. How amazing. Okay, okay, I'm gonna sound like a really weird person right now. So, anyway, not all recycling solutions may be available in your city. So, here I'm just gonna briefly touch on recovery because um, recovery may not be available in your country right now. Uh, recovery means recovering something from your waste, and in this context, it means send it for re send it for incineration to recover the energy. At this moment, um, Western Energy Plant is not available in a lot of countries. Uh, Western Energy is basically uh, trying to generate the heat from burning the food waste and then the heat that is recovered from the incinerator will generate electricity in return. So, even if this uh, waste to energy facilities is available in your country, please reserve this as your last option and only for those ways that cannot be prevented, cannot be optimized or cannot be recycled. Because um, incineration itself has a lot of controversy over the, the safety of the burning of the waste. So I'm not going to advocate on that. I'm not going to touch on that more because it's also um, quite limited right now. The bottom of the pyramid and the last part I want to talk about optimize um, opportunity. The second phase here is to talk about disposal in the landfill or the downside. So disposal or landfilling is the part where we want to avoid today. It is the reason why you spend your afternoon or your day with me here listening to the solutions what we could do before we set up food waste for incineration or land view. As I've highlighted that food rot will create a lot of problems to the environment and we should work on all solutions first before we throw our food waste into the bin and let the rubbish man take care of it. We want to avoid this option at all costs as now you know landfilling and incineration is actually not the only solutions that we have and we can do something about it. 
So now you are aware that there's plenty of different opportunities you can actually manage your waste. We now gonna look at the implementation part, which is the last part, the phase three part, which I call the action time part. The action time part basically consists of three simple things as well. The first rule is that you need you can implement your strategy stage by stage. You must educate your employees, and then you need to measure. You need to measure the success and the bottom line as well. So now you have set the targets and you have an idea how you want to do and what you want to do. You can create a time scale, a responsibility and assignment to all your staff. But before you do that, you need to educate your employee why tackling food waste is very important for you and why it needs a measure and why all your staff must participate. They must understand why you want to do this. You can draw up a simple uh, standard of procedure, a guide with pictorial on how to segregate and to which bin. You can offer them training. But most importantly is that you need to get them to understand this is the new way and this is what we will be working on. Along the way, you need to review the progress on each plan and you need to tweak things that is not working. You measure the output to know where and how you have reduced it. So data like volume, type of waste and where the resources is, you can recount them again and you can see. So you can go back to the try, go back to the first phase again and you do another set of audit. Say after a month of implementation and you see whether have any rubbish been reduced and uh, while doing this have you um, has the expenses been brought down uh, for example so measure it and have a periodical review and tweak those that is not working and those and improve those that can work most importantly is also you need to inform your customer you need to inform your customer what you're doing so for example you do a poster or an announcement in the social media and you share all this progress with your customer it is important so that they are aware that your outlet is different and you guys are setting new examples. What you do, why you do it, the volume you saved or you have diverted or you have redistributed and what is your plan in the future. Those are simple message that your customer will be very happy to know and once they understand and accept, they will become your biggest advocate because they know what you are doing here is for the greater good. So always celebrate and share your achievement. Thank you very much for listening to my afternoon. Um, remember, we are here to move something good for the next generation. So try to be the solutions today and not the problem. And we all individually can do something about it. Thank you. So that's it for this episode. Thank you so much for sticking around with us to listen to this. And as we said earlier, do share a picture with us. Hashtag stop food waste. Hashtag Ecoamid solutions. Hashtag Grim Living Chats. And we would love to share your experience and how these tips have been able to help you with others and people all over the world. Join us on the next episode as we discuss new ways of making a change in this world. Until then, live great.